In this video tutorial, we'll use LabVIEW 2010 to communicate with the Campbell Scientific CR1000 data logger. But before we go any further, it should be noted that there are no better tools for communicating with the Campbell Scientific data logger than those made by Campbell Scientific. But moving forward, the very first thing we want to do is to program the CR1000 to take measurements and act as a Modbus slave. Now, I'm starting with the uh, default template presented by the CR Basic Editor. And that uh, default program or default template um, measures the panel temperature and battery voltage every one second. It also calls a special type of subroutine um, uh, called a data table every one second. And in this example, the data table is called test. Test uh, will save the minimum battery voltage and the last known panel temperature every 15 seconds. Now, we're using Modbus uh, communications um, to interact with LabVIEW uh, 2010. So we'll need to do a little configuration here. The first thing I'm going to do is create uh, a few variables, uh, the counter to make things interesting, um, and also an array that will serve as our Modbus register. Now I'm going to type it out as long because we're going to use 16-bit signed integers um, for our data transfer. Uh, so each value will only require one Modbus register. If uh, you're using 32-bit floating point numbers, then things will be a little different as each value will take up two registers. So we've got that set up. The next thing we need to do is actually configure the logger as a Modbus slave. So we'll enter the Modbus slave instruction. Now out of the box, the CR1000 supports a wide array of communication protocols, and Modbus is, just ha happens to be one of those. And each one of the instructions comes with extensive help in the CR Basic Editor and example programs. So please feel uh, free to review those uh, when you uh, follow this tutorial. Now having done this a couple times, uh, first thing we're going to do is set the data logger up to communicate on IP port 502. Then we're also going to select some baud rate, it doesn't really matter here, we are performing uh, communications over TCP IP, not over a serial port in this case, though that is possible. We'll also give the data logger a Modbus address. We'll tell it that its uh, registers um, should be mapped to the array that we set up earlier called MB. And then we're going to set the Modbus Boolean var parameter to zero, instructing the data logger to map its uh, input coils or coils to control ports one through eight. Then we're going to select the data type of 16-bit signed integer and then insert the instruction. Now, the next thing we need to do is to actually put some data into our Modbus register. Uh, so we'll make things interesting. We'll uh, increment a counter. Then we'll put that counter in the first register, which would be by default 400,001. So we'll put that counter there. Then in the next register, we'll put the panel temperature. And in the third one, we'll put bat volt. Now, panel temperature and bat volt are floating point numbers. And as I said before, we'll be transferring data as 16-bit signed integer. So to preserve some decimals, we're going to multiply each one out. Say for panel temperature, I want to keep the first decimal. I'll multiply it by 10. And then I'll run it through um, the int function so that we get rid of any decimals. And for battery voltage, I'll multiply it out by 100 so I keep two decimal points. And again, run it through int 
uh, to uh, remove any um, extra decimal points there. And I think we're set. Uh, so we'll save and compile the program, check our work, and then we'll see that uh, we get a little warning. Uh, Modbus instruction is um, using the set coil function and you know if you happen to be using the control ports for serial communication or port set or SDI 12 or anything like that this uh, could interfere with that functionality so it's just a warning not an error um, so we're going to actually save compile and send this to our data logger which is uh, connected to uh, my local area network the data logger can communicate using PACBUS over IP Modbus TCP, HTTP, email, FTP, a wide variety of communication protocols all at the same time. It's not a one or other type situation. So we're going to uh, just real quickly use the connect screen to kind of check up on our data logger, make sure everything looks good. Uh, so we'll look at the public table. We see our panel temperature 18 degrees Celsius, our battery voltage is 12.6, our counter is incrementing as expected, and our Modbus registers are updating as expected here. 184 for 18.4 degrees, 1268 for 12.68 volts. Uh, so we're going to just disconnect there, minimize that, and then we're going to launch uh, LabVIEW 2010. We're going to need to create an empty project and then we will create a new I.O. server here. And the I.O. server type will be Modbus. We want LabVIEW to uh, act as a Modbus master. And then we will select that our connection is Modbus over Ethernet or Modbus TCP. Enter the IP address of our data logger. Select OK. And then we will need to create bound variables to our library. And since that library is a Modbus uh, master, we're presented with a wide uh, variety or options of uh, Modbus uh, registers here. Um, control ports 1 through 8 have been mapped to coil inputs, so we're going to add those. We're going to add 8 of them, of course. Our MB array that we set up in uh, CR Basic Editor are mapped to registers 400,001 through uh, what 400,011 so we'll add that because we had a 10 element array in our in our program so I'm going to add 10 and select OK now we'll say OK it's configuring and we get our multiple variable editor presented to us now the first eight look good data type of boolean coil on off true false However, the next 10, we need to set these to 16-bit signed integer. So I've gone through and updated all of the um, data types to 16-bit signed integer. Select Done. And then, of course, I want to save my project. Um, so I'll save all. So I'll call this project uh, MB. Um, example 1. I'll save my library as MB example 1. And I'm going to want to make sure that uh, I make sure I deploy everything, get things uh, all um, compiled and ready to go. Last uh, piece of the puzzle was to create my VI. And 
and uh, it's pretty easy to get started with this. All I need to do is drag and drop my registers onto the front panel. So here I'm dragging all of the um, all of those coils onto the front panel, and I'll highlight them, evenly space them, line them up. And then I'll do the same thing for counter, panel temperature, and battery voltage. If you remember that from our uh, program, we'll line those guys up. Uh, make sure I save, save all. We'll make uh, this uh, MB example one VI. Uh, and just see, just for uh, good measure, I'm going to make sure I deploy all, get all the dependencies all worked out. Now we should be able to run the project and see, there we go. Our counter is at 341, our uh, panel temperature is 18.3, our battery voltage is 12.68. Um, I'm going to bring up the connect screen again see if I can get these guys living side by side because what I want to show you is the ports and flags window um, side by side here with um, uh, it's got the focus so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, first show you that the port status 1 through 8 are all false all these LEDs are turned off next thing I'm going to do is use Modbus TCP, use LabVIEW, to turn on ports 1 through 4. I'll go back to my uh, ports and flags, and actually connect to the data logger, so there's update, and see that ports 1 through 4 have been turned on. I'll go through and turn two of them off, and see that ports 1 and 3 have been turned off. So I'm, I'm not only reading uh, data from the CR1000, but I'm also controlling or writing data back to the CR1000.